Mm -hmm. Oh, sorry. Um, just cleaning my phone, actually. Um, hope you're doing the same. These things can carry all sorts of bugs. I'm just using a disinfectant wipe. So let's get on to today's news. It is Friday the 6th of March. Oh, that's what I was cleaning my phone with. It says it kills 99.9% .9 of bacteria and viruses, so I figured that must be okay. I have no interest in Dettol whatsoever. Other brands are available. Now, um, getting on to the serious business. Well, that, that is serious, actually. Um, COVID-19, coronavirus disease, first identified in 2019. It's Friday the 6th of March, and you are most welcome. Now, a bit of a landmark here. Over 100,000 cases confirmed in the world. Now, I know this number was reached weeks ago in reality, but it's still quite stark to see it in the official figures, really. And uh, 3,804 deaths. Now, yesterday, the World Health Organization were equating these two numbers. And when you equate those two numbers, that number is 3.8% of that number. That is pretty frightening. I'm hoping that that's not um, the reality of the situation. Um, I suspect it may not be, but that's what the World Health Organization were doing yesterday. So I'm just still trying to work out their thinking. Good to see a large number of uh, recovered cases, over 55,000 recovered cases. Now, the World Health Organization are saying that uh, COVID-19 is a threat to every country, which is clearly the case. But they're saying the virus can still be contained. Theoretically, I agree with them. Practically, I don't. I fully expect to get this condition in the next few weeks or few months anyway. It's looking like 60 to 80 percent of the population in my country is going to get this disease. And I suspect it's no different in your country. And I really, really hope you get a mild version of the disease. In fact, I really, really hope you get the asymptomatic presentation where you don't even know you had it. And many of you will. But I really don't think this virus is going to be contained. Now, I, I agree it can be contained. And we're going to look at examples of this today. But in practice, for reasons we've been looking at in these videos, I don't think it will be. Just to give you one of those reasons now, clusters can be established in countries with poor surveillance and poor healthcare resources and access to healthcare, where the virus can proliferate massively, acting as a new epicentre. I've been pessimistic about this for a long time now, and uh, I do expect to get this infection now in the next weeks or months, unfortunately. Now, encouraging signs in South Korea, that's not me speaking, that's the World Health Organization speaking, because the number of new cases is declining. But of course, Korea is an advanced, very clever, very well organized, reasonably well disciplined society. We can't extrapolate from the South Korean experience to, well, let's name some countries, some African countries, to some, some Asian countries where, where they are less organized. I said that without naming countries, didn't I? But I think we all know countries where the organisation is not as good as South Korea and this will spread really quite prolifically as soon as it goes into the community transmission phase. And the WHO says some countries are not taking uh, COVID-19 seriously enough. Let's just say I agree with that statement. Now, South Africa first case reported. Now, in South Africa... Um, HIV, human immunodeficiency uh, virus causing the acquired immunodeficiency syndrome is endemic. Seven million people have got it under the age of 20% uh, of adults under the age of 50. Now, how is COVID-19 infection going to affect these people? Um, the answer is I have no data to answer that question, but I am very concerned. I'm worried about it, in fact. Because we know from the limited data that we have that people that get COVID-19 infection who have other concurrent infections uh, have seemed to do badly. Again, there's no quantified clinical trials on it, but there are quite a lot of individual cases where people had several infections at the same time and seemed to do badly. 
Now, I strongly suspect it will depend on how well the HIV is controlled. So if people are on highly active antiretroviral therapy, as a lot of people are, thankfully, in South Africa, and they're well controlled, then I would expect their immune system to be reasonably resilient. If the HIV is not well controlled, I would not expect their immune system to be reasonably resilient. But having said that, I don't know. So even if someone's well controlled on HIV medication, does that mean to say they'll have the same immunity as someone who's not HIV positive? I simply don't know. But that is certainly a concern, not just in South Africa, but in many sub-Saharan African countries. Moving on to Iran. The official figures there are 4,747 confirmed cases in Iran. We know it's way higher than that, we just don't know how much higher it is than that. But if the parliament is representative of the population as a whole, we do know that 23 parliamentary deputies are off sick, and I believe that three government officials have died from the condition. There's also a national mobilisation plan, which is good, as long as that's done effectively. All educational institutions, schools and universities are closed. And the death rate, we don't know what it is for sure, but it does seem to be high. And the high death rate in Iran is, consider is continuing to be concerning because we don't fully know why that is yet. We think it might be due to poor health care and limited av availability of health care that raises the case fatality rate, the uh, CFR, but um, that is not yet transparent. South Korea, cases continue to rise, of course, as do deaths, but the number of newly reported cases is declining. And what the South Korean authorities are saying, and this is why the World Health Organization was pleased and saw signs of hope from South Korea, or the Republic of Korea, that the newly reported cases were from known clusters of the disease. So it could be that the South Koreans are managing to contain and delay the epidemic within their country. But as I've said, we can't extrapolate from this to other countries because South Korea is a well-off, highly developed, highly industrialised, highly sophisticated, organised economy and political country. Others are not. But it is a bit pathetic to see the, the way they're playing tit for tat with Japan. So Japan info imposed two week quarantine on people coming from Korea and the Koreans spat the dummy out and said, oh, well, we'll do the same. Now, um, although that's a bit pathetic, the results are actually good because the end results are that the restrictions are stricter between the two countries. And previously, in my view, international communications have not been sufficiently restricted. And moving on to uh, Switzerland. First death reported in Switzerland, I'm sad to say. First case in Bosnia. Cases in Italy, of course, continue to rise. And we looked at the death rate and the percentage of deaths in Italy yesterday and we saw the case fatality rate in Italy was uncomfortably high. All educational establishments are shut down till mid-March in the whole of the country. Which I'm pleased to see, really, because I've got a new saying here. I've said it a few times. But this is it. We need to move from reactivity to proactivity. So it looks like the Italian authorities are showing some proactivity here in closing down educational establishments, which I'm pleased to see. Rather, rather than waiting for a case in a school, then saying, OK, we've got a case in the school, we'll now close the school down. They're saying we're going to close the schools down proactively before there's a case in the school because there may well be a case in the school that's just incubating and is infectious but is not yet symptomatic and has not yet been diagnosed so I'm pleased to see that level of proactivity there now um, Egypt 15 cases and again Nile crews nine people have tested positive on a ship these ships that sail up and down looking at pyramids or, or whatever they do in Egypt um, I think it's going to Luxor or Aswan or somewhere. Anyway, um, nine people tested positive, but they're asymptomatic. And this, again, is concerning because those nine asymptomatic people on the ship would be mingling around with everyone else on the ship, potentially spreading and infecting everyone else on the ship. 
and they might not stealing, start feeling sick until the end of the cruise. By which time it's, well, which time it could be too late. Now China, 140 new cases yesterday. That's a remarkably low number. The number of new cases in China is greatly declining as their social quarantining and isolation of positive cases program mounts and becomes well organised. And I've had numerous reports from inside China showing just how well organised this is now. The Chinese having started off disastrously covering this up and now doing quite superbly in using their organisational skills and their logistical capacity to greatly reduce the number of new cases. So this is very encouraging news from China. And yesterday we actually talked about backflow, that there's a risk of cases going back. We noticed the case of the Chinese restaurant workers going back from Italy to China who had to be quarantined. Now my country, the UK, 116 cases, Scotland, five new cases and uh, 11, 11 in total. Now only last week I heard a senior Scottish politician saying, well, we haven't got any cases in Scotland. And, and, and we'll, you know, basically, I'm paraphrasing her, but she was saying, well, we'll, we'll react when we need to. You know, no, it's too late then. We need to be proactive. First death in the UK. Now, I did report a death a couple of weeks ago from the UK. That was a British citizen. And I think he, they were on the Diamond Princess, the cruise ship that was quarantined in Japan. So this is the first death uh, in the UK here. Now, of these 116 that we know are positive, 45 are currently being treated at home, self-isolating at home with support. And I completely agree with this approach the British authorities are taking. And I know that a similar approach has been taken in China as well. So the worst thing we want is people with a COVID-19 infection infecting our doctors, nurses and other patients and vulnerable people in hospital. That's the last thing we want. And the other thing we really don't want is we don't want these people that are COVID-19 positive getting other infections at the same time. And unfortunately, hospital acquired infection is a common problem. I know I have acquired several myself working in hospitals. It's a common problem. So they're being treated at home with support. Now, as long as these people are trustworthy and are, and are playing the ball, and we understand that they are, then I think that is a remarkably good strategy. My concern is other family members getting infected and other family members going in and out of the home. So as long as people can be reasonably isolated, and I assume the authorities have taken what I've said into, into account, that seems a remarkably good idea for the protection of the individuals and for the protection of the, the community in the hospital. Now, unfortunately, 10 of the cases in the UK, we're seeing community spread. Now, we mentioned in Korea that 60% of the cases are community spread. That means there's no epidemiological links. People don't know where they got it from. They just got it from other people in the community. And this is a bad sign. So 10 community spread cases in the UK. This is a very, very bad sign, actually, because of the asymptomatic spread that seems to be happening now in my country. And two members of the national carrier, British Airways, have been uh, tested positive. Um, I wonder if they caught it in one of those uh, aeroplanes. Now, fascinating email I got from someone who's just returned from China to the UK. And they said this. This is a direct quote from their email. I've been struck by the huge contrast in how seriously China is taking this, but how people in the UK don't seem to think that such strict measures are worth the economic or social cost. So this individual who's lived in China for many years, just come back, impressed by the strict authorities, strict precautions the Chinese authorities are taking, and somewhat bemused by the somewhat lackadaisical approach in the UK. Because in the UK, as I've said, we need to be proactive now. And to a large extent, I simply don't think we are being. Sadly, 
the virus has reached the Palestinian territories. Seven cases in uh, Bethlehem. All the religious places there closed down, as I understand it. State of emergency declared by the Palestinian authorities for 30 days. All educational establishments shut, university schools, everything. No public gatherings. Bridges to the other parts of the world have been closed off and traders are being regulated to prevent profiteering. Let's hope that last one works. So sad that cases have now occurred in that in that part of the world in Bethlehem there. Now the United States. I've had quite a few emails recently. I, I said, dared to say that the CDC had dropped the ball a few days ago in their testing protocols. And I've got emails from some people in the United States outraged that a mere foreigner would dare to criticise their country, which of course I accept. Um, that, that's a legitimate criticism. But uh, more emails from other Americans saying, thank goodness someone is calling out the American system. We know it's not working. So you can take which view of that uh, you like. But I'm going to say it again. The testing in the United States up to this point has been lamentable. For such an advanced country with so many possible cases and the possibility of community spread in several areas that the testing program has been well behind the curve. But we did announce yesterday that American senior politicians announced that they're going to really get on the ball with testing and start local testing soon. And as I said the other day, better late than never. Washington State, uh, 70 cases. Now, these were largely in a particular um, uh, care home for people with chronic sick conditions, I understand. Uh, 10 deaths, which well, 14% may be you know, frighteningly high. Uh, we need to pro protect these uh, vulnerable members of our society. California, Washington, Florida state, all Florida, all, all declared states of emergency. And there are cases in uh, Texas. Now, this uh, other thing that's rapidly turning into a debacle again, definitely getting feelings of deja vu here from another ship that we could be, men could be mentioned called the Diamond Princess. Um, this one's called the Grand Princess. And it's off the coast of uh, California. Passengers, there's 10 passengers and crew with flu-like symptoms being tested for COVID-19. Dramatic footage of a military helicopter flying out the test kits to the ship as it was at sea. Two and a half thousand passengers had disembarked in San Francisco on February the 21st and a passengers tested positive who disembarked. But another two and a half thousand passengers got on. The ship was denied entry into San Francisco and apparently there's 2,300 passengers with about 1,100 members of the crew. I think they're docked now, but they're, they're in quarantine. They're not allowed off. And I'm not going to be, I'm not going to pretend here that I'm, I'm not concerned. Uh, we saw well over 700 cases, wasn't it, on the Diamond Princess? And there was no doubt in my mind that people were becoming infected on the ship when they were in what was supposed to be their quarantine in port in Yokohama in Japan. Now, I don't know about this Grand Princess ship. I don't know if it's much different to Diamond Princess, but I imagine the air conditioning systems and things on it are very similar. So I'm really hoping that the American authorities have learnt hard lessons that were learnt by the Japanese authorities in how to quarantine and isolate cases on a ship. Let's hope that is the case. Sydney, Australia, uh, their number 60, 60 confirmed cases. Uh, elderly care facilities have been affected again, concerning. Now, a couple of few schools have closed apparently in Sydney, but it seems to be after there's been cases. So the schools there seem to have closed after there have been cases. So they reacted. I, I don't know this in detail. I might be being too harsh on the schools in Sydney. If I am, I apologise. But I did see a news report where there was a child tested positive at the school and the school reacted to that. We haven't got time for reactivity. We need to move to proactivity. Uh, now, on a slightly lighter note, Coles and Woolworths, the two biggest supermarkets in Australia, have rationed the sales of toilet rolls. 
panic buying of toilet rolls. It's actually quite amusing, really, if it wasn't such a sad reflection. Right, France, uh, 423 cases, seven deaths, 150 schools closed. And what really concerned me about France was their President Emmanuel Macron, who we assume is a well-informed man, thinks an epidemic is going to be essentially unavoidable in France, as I believe is the case for my country. And finally today, with so many places we could have picked to talk about, Germany, another 150 cases yesterday, that makes 577 cases. Um, now this professor, very senior virologist in Germany, says that the government should consider closing schools, kindergartens, universities and ban large gatherings. In other words, this virologist in Germany is saying we need to... I think that's what he's saying. And this eminent virologist says that certain factions, at least, of the German government are acting as if the Germans were immune to coronavirus. They're not immune to coronavirus because this is a novel virus and they will have no immunity to it. So better to behave as if you have no immunity than as if you have immunity that you have not got. If you sneeze, get out a tissue, catch it, bin it, kill it, wash your hands after sneezing and wiping your nose. If you think your hands can be contaminated, catch it, bin it, kill it, because remember, 